my name is Leslie Levy and I am the director of the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska on the campus of the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, I'm just going to give everyone a few minutes to pop in and I know that earlier yesterday we had about 68 people who had signed up to join us today. So I'm just going to give people a couple minutes to do that and um, we will see, we have about 35 with us right now so um, we'll just give people a few minutes. Um, for those of you who are joining us on your screen, you should see Teresa Durier Wong and Andrew Lee and Marianne Fons, who will be joining us and participating in tonight's First Friday. We are excited to be here. Um, if anybody has talked to me in the last month or so, they will have heard me say this, but I keep saying it because I'm trying to get my brain wrapped around the fact that it's actually November. In my mind, it feels like it should still be March. So um, it's, it's just hard to, it's hard to do that. It's hard to um, change our clocks and, um, <laughs> leave work and have it be dark or leave our houses and have it be dark. But um, Teresa is, for those of you on the screen, Teresa is joining us from Houston and it would look like she was, you know, had the windows open and it's a windy day, but my guess is it's a dog, perhaps a little <laughs> fur, a fur child joining us. It keeps going under the quilt, so sorry. <laughs> very nice, very nice. I'm going to have to add that as a feature or an effect of mine and get mine trained to do that. There you go. Motion. It's like the fans gives it that movement. Yes, exactly. It's just that, <laughs> perf that perfect, yes, ambiance to it. So I've always had this concept that, you know, because I love the quilt so much, that if you could just peek behind the quilt and see yeah. the story of the quilt, if we could just turn it over like a, or open it like a book. That's happening for you, Teresa. <laughs> We're gonna be behind the quilt. Hopefully it won't come crashing down. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have a couple of questions in our chat function about whether or not people can see in if, if people are in speaker view or gallery view. Um, I think to the best of my knowledge, um, the Quilt Museum is hosting this and we do not have it blocked. You should be able to use your own controls to change from speaker to um, full screen. To, so um, I would just invite you, I know our, um, our Laura, Chapman, who is our communications and tech person is on with us. And so um, if anybody's having any problems, feel free to put that in chat if you want. If you have questions along the way, um, go ahead and put those in either the Q&A or the chat. So it is, a, I have about 535 on my calendar, so I are on my clock. So I wanna go ahead and get us started. Again, welcome. It is the International Quilt Museum's first Friday. It's our virtual first Friday tonight. We're glad that you could join us. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the International Quilt Museum, we are located in Lincoln, Nebraska at the University of Nebraska on East Campus. We are home to the world's largest quilt collection. We have almost 7,700 quilts representing over 60 countries and um, almost 500 years of textile history. So um, as part of that um, wonderful process, our mission is to build a global audience that appreciates the cultural and artistic significance of quilts. So it's nice and broad and um, enables us to do lots of things. Um, as such, our curators and our collection manager work really hard with our acquisitions committee to ensure that our collection is representative of the entire spectrum of quilt making over the centuries and that this collection is stewarded at the highest of levels. So as such, we kind of wanted to show you a new piece in our collection. 
Um, we thought being November that it would be wonderful to recognize Veterans Day with a special program. So we are delighted that tonight um, we are being joined by quilter and vet Andrew Lee, who lives in Tennessee. We also have Teresa Durier Wong with us from Texas and Mary Ann Fons from Iowa. Two women who most of you probably know, they're quilters, authors, and all around change makers. So we're glad to have them um, and to have a dialogue with Andrew tonight. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Teresa Durier Wong to all of you. Teresa is a lifelong writer and communicator. She holds a master's of liberal studies degree from Rice University. And in recognition of her academic research was named the Faith P. and Charles L. Bybee Foundation Scholar by the Bybee Foundation and the Texas Quilt Museum. Teresa began her career as a television journalist and spent several years as the publisher of a fine arts magazine. For two decades, she worked in public affairs and became vice president of communications for a large company. In addition to being a very accomplished quilter and the author of four books, Teresa frequently lectures to guilds across the United States. We have had the distinct honor to have Teresa um, speak at the Quilt Museum. She's also done book signings and has joined us for multiple um, events here. And we're always delighted to have Teresa. Um, Teresa has a special connection to Lincoln, Nebraska. So I will let her tell you about that. So without further ado, Teresa, take it away. Thank you, Leslie. That's great. I really appreciate that. And thanks for the invitation to be here with you guys tonight. Um, it's yeah, it's a thrill to be with Marianne again, who I haven't seen since, I guess, festival last year. And um, maybe Andrew as well. We've talked many times, but we haven't seen each other in person since the Houston Festival, which of course we're all missing this year in person. But um, so I'm just here tonight. I wanna um, talk a little, just a brief uh, introduction of Andrew and tell you a little bit about how we met. And um, I wanna start off by saying I have a really special affinity for the museum in Lincoln. I feel like they are doing uh, really God's work um, in helping protect and um, uh, preserve our quilt stories in a way that no one else in the world is doing. And so I'm really um, enamored with their work and so proud of everything that they're doing. Um, and I have a special connection to Nebraska anyway and to Lincoln because my family is all from there. Um, as Leslie said, I'm in Houston, so I'm a native Texan, um, but spent a a huge part of my childhood in Lincoln um, and the surrounding areas. So I'm always happy to come back. We were hoping to be there in person to do this, but here we are on Zoom. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I want to introduce to you Andrew Lee, um, who is a phenomenal quilter and he joined our quilting community not very long ago, um, within the last few years. And I'm not gonna give away his story. I want him to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but I had the pleasure of meeting Andrew um, about a year and a half ago in Tennessee. And um, it was an unforgettable meeting. And um, Andrew and I uh, just clicked and became friends and started talking all the time after that. And um, we, he had just finished a pretty phenomenal quilt when we met. And I felt that that quilt and um, Andrew's work as a, a supremely talented artist and the reason that he took up quilting and the story behind this quilt all came together um, to make this quilt really unforgettable. And I really wanted to help preserve that quilt. So I approached Leslie and the International Quilt Museum and their acquisition committee um, to see if we could make this quilt part of the permanent collection. So I was really, really happy um, to be the facilitator and even uh, a donation that I made to help bring this quilt to the uh, Lincoln Museum where I feel like it belongs. So. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. So I know we're going to show the quilt. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I turn it back over to you, Leslie, or do you want to turn it over to Andrew? So I think, um, Andrew, let's ask you, would you like us to show the quilt right now? Or do you want to wait until you're visiting and you can tell us about it? Uh, let's, let's just wait, because I do okay. have it in my slides, if that's okay. all right. You guys you probably have a better picture once we get there, uh, rather than the picture. I mean, I love the picture that I have, but uh, I don't have all them fancy cameras, you know, that you guys may have had a, a better picture taken. So we'll see. 
So Andrew, share us your story. We're so excited that you're here with us tonight. Sure. Um, I am gonna go ahead and move to my share screen and see if I can show some pictures. And that way I can talk and, and share a little bit of my story. Um, okay, is everybody seeing it? Okay, my wife and I um, decided to take this wonderful quilted table runner class because she said we didn't do enough together. I said, you know, we're building a remodeling a house, we're doing yard work, we're visiting your parents. Uh, we go out to restaurants to eat, we go to historical places. Hey, Andrew, and can you make them full screen? That full screen. No, we're seeing your desktop. This is what I love about Zoom and doing a presentation with people that you know and that you like, because you just have this total conversation while you're doing it, right? <laughs> Where you can go, hey, can we try it? Here we go. That's perfect. That's so perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, for so some reason, it, it just it shared shared the partial screen, but not the full. Okay. Yeah. Um, there we go. Okay, so we took this table runner class and I thought that if I made a table runner that I could make a quilt. So I went back and we went to go purchase the fabric to make this uh, supposed quilt that I thought that I could make. Um, and of course, while we were there, we ran into the husband and wife team of the North Knoxville Quilts of Valor group, Dennis and Dolene Taylor. And Dennis invited me to an all men's group where three of the members are vets. So I became part of this group. And on my first uh, night, I was awarded a Quilts of Valor. And this is a picture of that event. If it is sharing that sh screen. Are we there? Okay, so. Dennis and Darlene Taylor awarded me this quilt. It was my very first men's group and none of the other men showed up. Everybody had something going on, which gave myself and Dennis time to bond and talk and, uh, and I received the quilt. So it was a, a great start, uh, lots of one-on-one -on -one time. And of course, in the process, uh, I decided I wanted to make a quilt for myself. So the quilt I made for myself was supposed to be a lap quilt and it was not. This is a king size Amish quilt frame hanging on the wall and it became a little bit oversized. Um, anyway, this became my newfound um, addiction, if you will, being a veteran and suffering from PTSD. Uh, while you go overseas, you train and you shut your light switch of emotions off and you stop feeling things and you just go through the motions day in, day out, no ups and downs, just flat line across the board. And you don't enjoy doing much. You don't enjoy being with people. And I found that sewing and quilting gave me a purpose. And in that purpose, I had something I could show for it afterwards. Um, so of course, being a new quilter, being invited to the guild, uh, they convinced me to enter a quilt into the quilt show. I entered Mother's Looking Glass, a quilt that I had made for my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. And in the Smoky Mountain Quilt Show in Knoxville, I won the Novice Award as this was the fourth quilt that I had ever made. It is my own design. Um, and of course, uh, afterwards, I thought, oh, I, I need to start sewing more. So I started making more quilts. And in that, I made a quilt of valor for a gentleman that I worked with his son. And of course, technical difficulties are not allowing me to open the uh, picture. There we go. Okay, so this is the quilt. 
I awarded it to Mr. Kenneth Carpenter, a 93-year-old uh, World War II vet. And in the awarding of the quilt, he told me that he didn't deserve it. And I said, Mr. Carpenter, I said, if you don't deserve a quilt, neither does anybody else in the entire world. I said, not only did you fight in World War II, but you didn't jump out of a plane or ride a tank or ride in a Jeep into Normandy, you walked a long ways, you walked. Um, so here is a picture of Mr. Carpenter, if it'll show, white screen of death. Trying to brighten things up a little bit, I guess. I don't know why it's shown white. Guess it doesn't like my Let's try this again. There we go. All right, so Mr. Carpenter, there's him and his wonderful quilt. And of course, I got addicted to the process of um, awarding a quilt to Valor, something that I'd spent time and effort on and, and giving it to someone. And it actually made me feel real, true, pure emotion. Nothing that was uh, manufactured by something else. It was the, the event, the, the generosity, the opportunity to give something to someone in an attempt to help them deal with their demons in their own time and in their own way. All right, screen sharing has stopped and closed. All right, so this is while I was here on military duty in Smyrna, staying in the barracks. Quilt in the background is one designed by Sharon Henry Lake. It's one I do quite often. Um, and of course, here on the table, you see the makings of my next quilt. Um, after the event of me receiving the novice award, I knew that I was gonna be thrown to the wolves no offense to any of you quilters who've been sewing for 30 and 40 years, but how do you make a quilt to compete with that? So of course, I thought, well, I could just do a Batman pixelated image. It'd be kind of cool. As it turns out, who's going to vote for a Batman quilt? Not many people. Andrew, can you click on the photo and see if we can see your, um, rather than your desktop and your thumbnail? Your thumbnail pictures, not your actual thumbnail. Not actually showing. How about that? No, we're seeing your desktop. I don't like that. It's because we're it's because we're doing this. Like when you tested it earlier, it was fine. Isn't that the way it always goes, right? Yes. If it yeah. can go wrong, it will. Of course. Or so good now. So this quilt that you're showing us right now on the wall with the stars was? Hero's Comfort, yeah. Okay. That's the one that went to the National Quilt Museum for the men, um, the men, men who quilt okay. um, feature. I wish it would just let me click and go to the next screen to see the next picture rather than having to go out and back in. Okay, here we go. Got it now. Um, this is another Quotes of Valor. Of course, after I made the initial one, I, I just kept going and going and going. I don't like this. It was working great earlier. We, we've all, we've, we've all- It's we've okay. All been yeah. It's okay. I know. It's okay. It's, it's what we do, right? I mean, life is a human process. Doesn't like my some of my photos are are delayed. Uh huh. 
Are they high res so it takes a while to load? Well, it's telling me now that Zoom needs to be closed and opened and again, but. Voila. And my pictures aren't high. I mean, they're nothing yeah. too big. Wonderful stuff on pictures. There we go. And hopefully that's my showing my image of a quilt pixelated now. No, still not. For some reason, it doesn't like my photos. So when we... Maybe Laura could share it. Okay, well, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what my, my next quilt and, and the Iwo Jima quilt and how it came about. Um, I thought that I needed to find a way to compete with women and, and men, some less than 20%, who quilt and how do you compete with that? So in order for me to figure out an image, I, I thought that the most iconic image that I can think about was or is the flag raising at Iwo Jima. So I thought I could pixelate it, turn it into a quilt. It ended up, in order for me to get the detail that I needed, it ended up being 12,100 pieces, 110 inches across, Well, wow. yeah, so in the, the making of this quilt, I would do a hundred pieces at a time, which took about an hour and a half. And I thought that this would be my only way to compete with men and women who do, in, who do indeed sew at the quilt show. I mean, the purpose of a quilt show is not only just to show quilts, but also to be competitive. And my military background makes me a competitive uh, natured individual. Um, so I felt that by sharing this quilt with people to see that in the adverse times of PTSD and such, I would quilt. So not only did it give an end game of a quilt that people actually could see, but it also gave me hours and hours and hours of therapy. Um, because a lot of PTSD people or people who have the disorder um, spend a lot of time isolated. And this gave me an opportunity to be somewhat isolated and yet still uh, produce something with it, not just wasted time like I had so much video game time before. I mean, I probably have three or 400,000 hours of video game time that I have nothing to show for. I could say that I was world's greatest PVP player on World of Warcraft. But unless you play World of Warcraft, you would never know what that was. So in that, I indeed made this wonderful quilt. And then um, my original plan was to try to find a way to sell it so that I could buy a long arm. At the current time, I only had a nine inch throated Foth Grand Quilter and I wanted a gamble. So I spoke at the TVQA day here in Tennessee in July of last year. And at the end of my uh, speech, a woman asked me what I was gonna do with the quilt. And I said, you know, I was gonna try to sell it. And in that I was given um, uh, an unbelievable gift. Uh, women in the, the quilting community are amazing and embraced me and uh, a woman stood up and said that she wanted to give me some money to go towards the quilt, which then inspired some other folks to do the same. And in turn, in the, the box that they passed around was a woman who said she would like to give me whatever more I needed to get my long arm for me to call her. And in doing so, um, I was gifted by my fairy godmother, a gamel Statler. Uh, so then my conversations with Teresa had changed, not, not in the aspect of how can I sell my quilt, but how can I 
ensure that it goes somewhere where it's going to be appreciated and um, protected and loved as much as I loved it and yet still transpire the message that this is part of what helped me heal and and that's the 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 part that gets me the most is it really it was selfish that's why I made the quilt I made the quilt so that I could heal it just so happens the byproduct of it of it is a quilt that now um is is in Lincoln in the same sense that's the same thing with quilts of valor I still quilt for my personal healing, it just so happens the byproduct allows another veteran an opportunity or an avenue to battle his or her demons with a quilt that, that I have produced. Um, so I'm going to go back just a little bit in, in how Teresa and I had our conversation across the 459 miles of Kansas. Um, she uh, gracefully took on my role as my uh, mentor and lifted up her wing and said, come here, little birdie, I'll show you the way and took off with where I wanted, you know, the quilt to go. And she said, well, what would you think about, you know, the International Quilt Museum? I said, well, it just so happens I'm on my way to Tacoma, Washington, delivering a load of boats. Let's stop in there and see the museum. So I stopped in, I saw the museum. And after reading the mission statement on the wall of the founder that, that for quilts to be preserved and shared forever. And that's the part that got me, the forever part, because I don't want the quilt just to be shown, you know, for, for two or three days and then packed away in a box. And then 50 years later, this quilt is never to be seen or heard from again. So after that phone conversation and the, the way that all of that went, I was forever grateful that Teresa, you know, uh, has the relationship that she does with the International Quilt Museum so that my quilt could be preserved for eternity. Well, it is a beautiful quilt. And um, will you tell everybody the size of it? Because I think that that gets, I mean, you don't realize just how big it is from the picture. Sure, it is 110 inches by 110 inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many pieces? 12,100. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um... And the, I guess the, the key part is none of it was strip pieced. And because of my OCD um, traits, I guess, Every block is lock stitch, three stitches on the front side and the back side of every stitch. So not as it not only is it just the you know the 15 stitches across the inch, but it's also an additional six on every block. I'm not even sure I know what that means, but it sounds really good. <laughs> it means that when you have to use jack, it's not fun to take apart. It's easier to make a new hundred pieces. <laughs> Well, Andrew, I'm um, talking about Quilts of Valor and what that has meant to, to you personally, um, but also to those around you um, and that those that you have come into contact with leads us very nicely into introducing our um, next guest, who is Marianne Bonds, whom many of you um, out there will know um, or recognize her as um, one half of the quilting industry's dynamic duo of Fonz and Porter. Um, <laughs> so Marianne and Liz Porter met as young mothers, right? You started sewing together and finding a pastime that you could do that fit the parameters of your life at that time, and um, which then led to teaching locally and writing books and then regionally and nationally and eventually led to a magazine, Fonz and Porter, Love of Quilting and right. television show and- World domination. World domination, <laughs> world, world domination as all things quilt related <laughs> ultimately does. Um, 
it's kind of like when I asked one of our curators why she had been with the museum for so long um, when I was first coming to the museum. And she said, because quilts have taken me around the world. And Marianne, quilts have definitely taken you yes. around the world several times and back again. Um, but when you finished your world tour and the magazine and the TV shows and uh, the radio, um, you moved to doing nonprofit work um, and working and giving your time. And one of those was the Quilts of Valor Foundation. So can you talk to us about how you made that transition sure, and sure. what that meant to you? Sure, well, first of all, uh, Andrew, I loved hearing your story. You brought me to tears several times um, and your quilt is spectacular. And I just love being with you here and seeing you receive your quilt of valor. And something that Andrew said, um, it really makes it easy for me, me to say something I want to say, which is I got involved with Quilts of Valor for self-serving reasons, sort of selfishly. And I do think that um, altruism and volunteerism, you know, you get, mad, you get back way more. But um, Quilts of Valor, well, we sold our business in 2006 and I got involved with Quilts of Valor you know, shortly after that, like 08 or so, and the foundation was really still in its infancy. And I had met Catherine Roberts, the founder, and we had clicked. And she asked me to be on the board of directors. And I really knew nothing about nonprofits. I still don't know that much. <clears throat> but um, I did serve on the board of directors for seven years as Quilts of Valor was growing. And that was kind of my goal was to help Quilts of Valor grow. And, um, and here's the self-serving thing. And I made some notes, I did some math. When I first found out about Quilts of Valor, it first really got on my radar, uh, I think it was at Quilt Market years ago, they had recorded about 40,000 quilts awarded. Wow. And I said to myself, wow, that's a lot of quilts. And so I multiplied that um, by $200 as the amount of money that a person might spend to make a quilt. It really should be more than that. It was $8 million. And I thought, wow, this sector of the quilting world has spent $8 million to make quilts, to give to veterans and service members, and then go make more. Um, they finish them and they make more. And as, as Andrew described, you know, once you start awarding Quilts of Valor, you, know, you just want to do it again. You know, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing experience. And so, you know, I looked on the website today and we're at 260,000 plus quilts, it's $52 million that, um, and so I, you know, I, I agreed to serve on the Quilts of Valor board for two reasons. One, it enabled me to express my patriotism in a way that I could handle, that felt right for me, and it could help my industry. So I, I worked with the Quilts of Valor Foundation like it was my full-time job for probably not all those seven years, but you know, I didn't know what a policies and procedures manual was, you know, but we were, but the, but you know, you, it's hard to have that until you have done procedures and done things. And so, you know, a whole bunch of people wrote down what they did, but I know about how to prepare something for publication, you know? Mm -hmm. So I worked hard to prepare that um, uh, policies and procedures manual. Um, we did all kinds of things and you know, um, we were taping a TV episode, um, or I was at Iowa Public Television and Andrea Coyle, who was our longtime director there for years and years, said, you know, this would make a great special, the story of Quilts of Valor. Um, and, you know, many public television stations affiliates create special programming for their festivals. And so Andrea said, you know, this is not about just about quilts, it's about uh, um, the military in America. And so I wound up, uh, she thought it'd be a great idea for a special. And, and so I said, yeah, how can we make this happen? And she said, uh, well, if you produce it, uh, it'd be more likely to get green light. And I'm like, well, what's producing? <laughs> I don't know. So I learned how to do production. And so with IPTV, we produced two um, special programs uh, on Quilts of Valor that aired nationwide and continued to air over and over and over again. Wonderful, wonderful stories. And uh, I think you can watch them free uh, at Iowa, Pub Iowa PBS. But 
uh, after those aired, I mean, everywhere I went, people said, oh, I saw that program on, on, that's why I'm a quilter. I saw that program on public television. So I've learned to make quilts so I can make quilts of valor. Yeah. So, you know, that's been my sort of my, my ride and, and my arc with Quilts of Valor. And I'm, you know, it's really standing on its own feet now. I'm not involved now, I retired. And so I get to have emeritus behind my name as board member emeritus. But you know, what Andrew said is just so true is the therapy and the peace and the comfort that we receive making quilts. You know, I experienced that for the first time when I was in my twenties, my mid twenties, when I learned to make quilts before the rotary cutter, before any of all this wonderful technology. And the therapeutic value of making a quilt is exactly as you describe. And we joke, uh, you know, is that, oh, quilting costs less than, than psychiatry, you know, <laughs> it's cheaper than, than of course, the, 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 the long arm, you know, you could get quite a bit of therapy for that, but it wouldn't be as good. <laughs> so, uh, so everything you had to say totally resonated with me. And uh, it makes me proud, just hearing you speak makes me really, uh, glad that I devoted the years that I did to Quilts of Valor Foundation. And so that's that's kind of my story. And I know Dennis Taylor, so it was really neat to see Dennis Taylor uh, in that picture with you. <laughs> well, Quilts of Valor is, I mean, even people who aren't familiar with quilting know and understand and can relate to the Quilts of Valor foundation and movement and process. Um, Andrew, how many Quilts of Valor presentations have you done? 72. 72, 72 in how many years? I started sewing in October of 2016, so four years. Four years, yeah. Wow. He's way ahead of me. <laughs> so um, I just, I kind of want, if if any of our wonderful guests and friends watching and joining us online have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A section and Laura will pick those up. And, um, and then if you have a question for anybody, please feel free to ask it um, while we chat and then we will answer those. But um, Marianne, how often do you know what kind of the average number of quilts that a quilter will make that is affiliated with Quilts of Valor? Oh, wow. That's such a great question because, um, you know, I have met people in the foundation that have made 50, 100, 200 Quilts of Valor. Wow. Um, you know, they just, it becomes their, their mission. And, you know, what you said a moment ago about people being aware of Quilts of Valor, Fund, Valor Foundation, I mean, that was Catherine Roberts' dream was uh -huh. that Quilts of Valor would be a household name. And I, and yeah. I think it is think becoming it is. more so, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, hats off to you, Andrew, for uh, and doing that. And you know, I'm sure you've presented uh, Quilts of Valor to uh, women service members, but I'm sure a lot have been to men. And I think, um, I mean, I used to say, I used to say when I was on my Quilts of Valor soapbox, every man, woman, and child in America should make a Quilt of Valor. If they just made one, and, and I have coached men, we have a program called Under Our Wings, which made me really pleased when you talk about Teresa putting you under her wing, but a program called Under, Under Our Wings, where you know a person that knows how to quilt uh, sits with a person who's not quilted before and, and helps them make that one quilt of valor. And I, I one time had a, a, a man who's a bank president, you know, he was uh, under his sister's wing making a quilt of valor. And he was so nervous, you know, you know, he handled millions of dollars, you know, but, but making this quilt, when he finally still sewed the last seam, he just kind of like uh, dramatically fell, fell on the floor. But um, I think it's wonderful to see a man present a, a quilt to another man. I mean, it's, it, it, it doesn't matter, but I mean, that's really a, a neat thing. And um, I've seen it. I'm sure you've seen it. Catherine Roberts used to talk about it, about how something about putting that quilt around the shoulders of a person and welcoming them home. And we give a hug, we don't during COVID times, but you know, a lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of people start talking about things they haven't talked about before and it enables them to somehow, uh, and in the different um, uh, stories and the documentaries we did, uh, you'll see recipients say, you know, this quilt means more to me than any metal you could pin on my chest because it was made 
for by someone for me. I have a question for Andrew too. So I know parts of the, you said you made 72 quilts of valor. And I think you made part of those while you were as a professional truck driver driving across the country. And also your Iwo Jima quilt was constructed um, mostly or partly in your truck. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that and having your sewing machine there with you and something most of us could never imagine. It's about the commitment to myself and the self-healing. So I knew that quilting was something that I needed to do. So in order to make it work, um, I brought a TV tray into my semi-truck and that's where I would sew. I would drive 10 and a half, 11 hours a day, uh, park for the night, and I would sew for an hour, hour and a half. My Iwo Jima quilt was made, the first 3,300 pieces were made here in Smyrna on base in the barracks. And then the rest of it was made throughout the United States, which is why um, when Angie Lamarie from uh, Five Little Monkeys Quilt Shop quilted it for me, she made the label also that says the city and state where it was made was everywhere USA okay. because it was made everywhere. Uh, I mean, it was wherever I had an opportunity to, to sew and quilt and um, you know, I see all these groups, you know, quilting groups on Facebook, women complaining about how small of a sewing space that they have. And I, I was in my semi truck with a full size ironing board set up. I mean, if, if there's a will, there's a way. I mean, uh, how, how much are you really willing to, to deal with to, to get the end result, whether it be awarding a quilt to Valor to a vet or, or just your self therapy of making one. So I have a question and it's kind of for both Andrew and Marianne. Um, we had one of our guests ask if we can share the patterns of the quilts that were shown. Now, I know there are Quilts of Valor pattern books, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, a book was published uh, a couple of years ago by Schiffer. Uh -huh. Uh, and in conjunction with Quilts of Valor with uh, a number of patterns. Uh, Love a Quilting Magazine, I'm no longer the owner or editor, but uh, for years it has published a Quilt of Valor in every issue. And so, um, and they've compiled them occasionally. Uh -huh. um, if you go to the Quilts of Valor website, qovf.org, uh, uh, there are some free patterns there. And the mm -hmm. thing is, you know, uh, there are some guidelines. They're pretty... Um, Minimal. I think the perfect size, and Andrew, I'd love to know what he thinks, is 80 by 100. I mean, 60 by 80, excuse me, 60 by 80, because it needs to be big enough to cover a human oh, being yeah. when they take a nap. And so there's a minimum size that's smaller than that, but I think 60 by 80 is the perfect. And, you know, you, you know, um, I used to scoff at panels, you know, pre-printed panels. And then I was at an award ceremony where there were a bunch of these panel quilts because the panels are beautiful now. And the guys that got them, they just love them because it has America on it. It has maybe it has an eagle on it. And you can make those so fast by adding some borders. And really, and Quilts of Valor don't have to be red, white, and blue, but they tend to be. But, you know, they, they aren't, they, they aren't, they don't have to be Andrew's Iwo Jima quilt. I mean, right, we've right. Really want great workmanship, beautiful, best quality fabric, but they can be very simple mm -hmm. and just a star or, you know, some, some, and, you know, and, and I think uh, what can be said for the simple patterns is you can make more of them more quickly. They don't take as much fabric. So, you know, um, that's, I think that's part of the therapy, isn't it, Andrew? You know, you're, you know, you can make a quilt of valor and it can be, something that's just a real, you know, um, everyday beautiful design. And when I cut out quilts, I usually cut out anywhere from nine to 11 at a time. And some of the patterns out there, uh, the Voyager from Villa Rosa, the Hero's Comfort, the one with the blue diagonal line that I did, that one, Sharon Henry Lake, that one's on the Quilts of Valor website. Um, I'm trying to think what other one I've shown. A super popular one is three tours that Tony Jacobson designed. Uh, I don't know if it's out, it's, I, it shows up all the time. It was the most popular pattern Fonz and Porter ever published. And I'm a huge fan of uh, Lisa Sutherland and Quilt Jubilee. The majority of her quilts are, are quilt in a day pattern or a day and a half. Um, 
the, the fireworks star goes together really quick. Um, Raise All American that we just did that with uh, Red Thread Studios and the quilt along there. That was spread out over eight weeks, but you only spent probably nine, nine, nine and a half hours sewing it total. You know, it's a very easy pattern, you know, that the people, you know, ooh and ah over when they are, you know, awarded. And it's the simpler ones that bring the most uh, response. And that's, yeah. I'm, it's, it's, it's simple, keep it simple and, and the, let the fabric speak for itself in the pattern, you know, so. So Andrew, tell us about the quilt behind you. Um, the quilt behind me is my men's group. We decided we were gonna do quilt blocks for each other. So it's a quilt to us from us. Oh, so nice. we, each, we each did four blocks. So um, one, of, one of our members was having some, some health issues so he didn't participate, but the quilt behind me is, is 20 blocks four from each of the, the members. So we each oh, made them and it was like a round robin. And then that way we, you know, we'd have something from each other. Um, That's wonderful. Teresa, you have to tell us about the quilt behind you. I will. This is a, um, actually a reproduction quilt that I made after seeing the uh, Cheddar exhibit in Lincoln. Um, maybe two years ago um, of cheddar quilts from the collection of Joanna Rose, the fabulous Joanna Rose. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and saw this particular quilt and just, I don't know, I just came home and made it. So um, it's a reproduction and it's pretty much true to the original except mm -hmm. I added a border around it. And um, pretty, pretty thrilled with it. It's great color, this timeless made, the original that I copied was 1880. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for if any of our viewers were in Houston last year, um, Teresa's quilt was hanging in Houston. And um, so that was fun to see. Um, I have a couple um, other questions. So Andrew, you were talking about the size and of your Yojima quilt and the number of blocks. Did you by chance log the number of hours that it took you across America? Oh, you're on mute. One of the gentlemen in my group said that I should keep track because somebody was going to ask at some point. Um, and so on my, you know, little uh, plastic container that I carried everything in, on the inside thing, I just taped a piece of paper and I, for every hour I would just do a tick mark. And I was right about 400 hours total. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it definitely shows it. Um, I, what other questions do I have? Oh, somebody wanted to know about my quilt. Mine is robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's the, you know, I'm, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska on the university campus. We have a football game tomorrow. You know, the world did not stop spinning on its axis. So I'm showing a little scarlet and cream, you know, um, in our grit, our glory. <laughs> so um, anyway. So, I have I, another question for Andrew. Tell us about um, quilting with your wife and yeah. even sharing a studio space and what's that, what that is like. Because I would so not do great. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great that we had to rip down a wall between two rooms to make it bigger because every time she had to try to iron, I was in her way. So um, we we're at, at that time, we had a four bedroom house. We now have a three bedroom. Uh, we ripped down the two closets from two bedrooms to make it one big space. So now it's a 14 and a half by 28 foot studio. Um, and I try not to touch her fabric unless I ask permission. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm pretty smart. What a gentleman. Yeah, so it, she, she, she didn't start quilting at first. She was doing um, little girl dresses and purses and aprons and such. And after, I think after she made her first Quilts of Valor, I think she, she got a little bit hooked into it um, when, when we got to award that and she was, you know, got to witness that. Um, that, that quilt we learned a lot on. She did a two and a half inch squared random quilt and neither one of us are very non-OCD enough to do random. It's very hard for us. So um, yeah, 
brown paper bag, pull out a piece and sew it is, yeah. And how many quilts of Valor quilts has Christy made? Um, five or six, I think. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's wonderful that you can do that together and have that um, another one of those things that bring couples together and um, the ability to give and do for others. We um, have just a few more minutes together. Um, we had talked about, and you had mentioned that if we weren't in a pandemic world, we could all be together here, um, being able to see your quilt in person. And, and when you see those in person, right, certain questions come to mind, there's certain things that happen, there's just that kind of synergy when people um, get to be together. So we have um, agreed, and we've talked about this, right, that um, it is all of our plans that at some point when we um, can travel again more freely and it's safe to do so, that um, your quilt is here, it is in the museum, um, and then when we can travel safely again, that you and Christy will come out and um, that you want to present uh, another Quilt of Valor and that we will have your quilt hanging. We will do a presentation, at least one if not more, um, in the reception hall here and we can be together when it is safe for all of us. Hopefully, you know, if that's Memorial Day or Fourth of July and heaven forbid it, it you know, is a year from now on Veterans Day, but um, the museum is committed to having you here um, at a time when we can do that. And we will let people know ahead of time um, so that they can make their travel plans and we can get Teresa back up here and her family and, um, and be able to do that. I think Andrew, you had mentioned that you did have um, somebody that you served with that lives in Iowa. I do. I, I mean, of course, with uh, the 11 years of active duty, it's hard not to have friends and battle buddies all over the United States. So I definitely would like to uh, present a Quilts of Valor once we get up there. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's monumental to me, you know, to not only to award it to another veteran, but for other people to see and, and feel that event. I agree. We've had Quilts of Valor exhibitions before, just like Mary Ann has had at the Iowa Quilt Museum as well. And they're always wonderful, moving, touching exhibitions. And it's wonderful to be able just to visit, get away from behind our desks and visit with people who are walking through the museums or looking at the exhibitions. Um, so it will be wonderful when we plan our next exhibition um, to be able to have yours in it as well. But um, I think most people know we plan our exhibition several years in advance, so it, it'll be a little bit, but your quilt will definitely be hanging in the museum. We've had a couple questions online asking us um, when they will be able to see it. And so we're hoping sometime in the next 12 months to be able to do, to, to have a little mini reunion with the four of us <laughs> and, um, and see yeah. that quilt. So. Any last comments or questions before we call it an evening? It's our time together is about up. And um, any last words, Teresa? I'll just say I'm, it's great to be here. And thanks to everyone for joining. And I'm really happy that um, Andrew found the world of quilting because I think we're all the better for it. Yeah. Yes, and, and I'm glad the world of quilting embraced him as it, uh, as it tends to do when newcomers come along. and. Uh, I'm actually working on a Quilt of Valor. I got it cut out today. It's for a book that Quilts of Valor is doing. I think it's called Quilts of Valor Stars that they've asked different people to make quilts. So I'm making one called From Sea to Shining Sea that I've done before that's for all in blues for uh, Navy guys. Oh, for women. Wonderful. women, either one. <laughs> wonderful. Well, it's fun to have you, Marianne, and learn a little bit of the history of Quilts of Valor and, um, and why after your career that that is where you pivoted in the direction that you went, um, such dedication. 
Andrew, any last comments or anything that? Um... I just want to thank Teresa and the museum for you know this wonderful event. You know that even though the COVID thing happened and all that, I just want to you know I I'm grateful that my quilt you know made it to the museum and and y'all still you know uh, I, I'm honored to have my quilt in the museum and I'm I'm glad that it finally it it's it was not as hard to let go as I thought it was going to be until, <laughs> until I'm standing at the post office um, mailing it. And it, yeah. it, it was bittersweet, you know, but yeah. uh, I did indeed receive word and tracked it and all that every day. So uh, I, I'm just glad that, you know, grateful that it's, it's there and it, it's a part of history now and that God's plan was for Teresa, you know, to be at the event and, and, and how all things have played out. Well, thank you. We are too. It is, you know, it is, um, we love it when people come back to visit their quilts or they'll call and they'll say, we're going to have a family reunion in Lincoln and we want to come spend a couple hours at the museum and can you pull out the quilt so we can all see it and, and, um, and be commune with it for a little bit. Um, we actually had a family that um, called us this is November. So they came in October. They were here three weeks ago um, and called especially to see if um, scheduled the time to come and visit and had us pull out the couple quilts that are in our collection and um, got to talk about them and see them and, and not touch them. Um, <laughs> so, so Andrew, you can come see your quilt anytime you want. We would be Thank you. I think that was an invitation also to crash Teresa's family reunion. There we go. <laughs> always, always, always. Yeah. So, it's a fun group. Um, yes. Marianne, tell us the hours that the Iowa Quilt Museum is open. Oh gosh. Um, the Iowa Quilt Museum is open every day uh, from 10 to 5, uh, Monday through Saturday, and noon to 4 on Sunday. Um, we share the acronym IQM with the yeah. International Quilt Museum, the Iowa Quilt Museum, and we are iowaquiltmuseum.org. So you might want to check uh, yeah. when, if you're going to visit. But um, the satellite uh, offices we have IQM East and <laughs> IQM West, right? Yes, um, and currently the the exhibit currently is um, beautiful simplicity that was curated by your own uh, Sarah Wolcott. And it's just two color quilts, like the one behind you. So she did a wonderful job of gathering some terrific quilts. So that's what we've got on right now. Yeah, and thank you for that. We love two color quilts, right? There's just something about them. So, and the um, Art Quilt Museum, International Quilt Museum is open 10 to four, Tuesday through Saturday. So um, like the Iowa Quilt Museum, all safety measures are in place and it's nice to just have people visit us. So and both of them, both museums are not far off Highway 80. So exactly. <laughs> you can go to one and then another one. <laughs> and people do that, and we are so pleased. So anyway, we want to thank everyone for joining us this evening um, virtually, and we hope to be able to welcome and see everybody in person soon. Teresa, Marianne, and Andrew, thank you so much for your time tonight and for joining us. And stay healthy and stay well, and um, we will see you all again soon.